Hello everybody, so it's been about three weeks, almost one month since my last update as an American stranded in Philippines during the pandemic. And uh, I guess the major news since that last video has been just uh, that they switched from a enhanced quarantine here in Davao to a general quarantine. And this is, this is brand new. Uh, they only wrote this into law yesterday. So I'm gonna step outside and see if the situation has gotten any better. It's been pretty severe for the last month with uh, tight restrictions on when you can go outside, when you can, when you can go shop, and a lot of things like that. So let's go ahead and walk around and see how things are here in the central part of Davao. And uh, as you can see, there's a good amount of traffic. There actually has been a lot of traffic lately. So I noticed that there was a lot less traffic when they began boxing us into our specific district. So they divided the city up into districts and then they had like military police guarding each district so people couldn't go between them. It was getting pretty uh, sketchy to say the least. But then eventually traffic kind of came back because I just don't think that it was being enforced. I'm pretty sure that the districts were not being guarded very closely. People could still drive between them. And now, as you can see, uh, traffic is, you know, still less than it was originally, but it's kind of gotten back to normal a little bit. So the main thing I'm curious about is, is, is if we still have to use these quarantine passes. Let's just get past all these people first. I don't wanna. Okay. So as I was saying, yeah, I think that, that that's like a cue for, I don't know, like a, like a money loaning, money lending business or something. That's always, that's always a uh, <laughs> a bad sign when you see people queued up to uh, take money out or to, uh, you know, to uh, take out loans. <laughs> but that's kind of, kind of the situation now. But anyway, my main, uh, my main concern is if we still have to use these things. These are, this is basically the pass that determines when you can go out shop, what what days you can go out, etc. Local hospital. So it would be a major improvement if we don't have to use that pass anymore. That's what I'm, that's really what I'm hoping for. Let's see if we can cross the street here. In Philippines, you just have to go for it sometimes. Banks are still closed over here. I'm, I'm just looking for any sign that things are getting better today. I'm just looking for any businesses that are usually closed, see if they're back up again. Really all I want is just any kind of nor normalcy to come back, I mean. Just something basic like going to a restaurant and picking up, you know, having some food to go or 
you know, going into a, a normal shop, you know, doing something like buying clothes. Anything like that would be, you know, would be fine. I haven't seen anything like that in so long. Uh, it's, very, it's very hot today. <clears throat> I figure I'll just walk to the store and see. Okay. Is this place open? I think it is open. Yeah, Azon's Boneless Chicken. It has, uh, has takeout food. That, that's, a, that's a good sign. Seeing a restaurant open for business. So what I was thinking about is just the idea that these lockdowns obviously are destroying economies. They're, they're uh, I mean, I don't, I, it's causing untold damage. You can only imagine how badly it's damaging Philippines, already a struggling country that deals with a lot of poverty. The whole point of these lockdowns was not to make zero cases of COVID-19. <clears throat> the, the point of the lockdowns was to prevent places like hospitals from being flooded with patients to prevent the system from collapsing. You're not going to completely prevent cases using lockdowns because you can't outwit Mother Nature like that. The virus spreads like a common cold. And because of that, it's always going to be spreading no matter how many preventative measures that you take. So this idea that you can get to a zero case count is extremely flawed. But that is the strategy here in Philippines. So long as there are any cases of COVID, they will continue some kind of quarantine. Whether it's a general or enhanced quarantine, they're not going to stop until there's zero cases of the virus, which means they're not going to stop. It will just continue forever until there's, quote, a vaccine. But what if the vaccine doesn't work? Then are we supposed to just allow our society, our civilization to come collapsing down? In my opinion, the only logical solution is to just um, focus on treating the illness. That's why we shouldn't be shooting down the possibilities of any drug working, whether that's hydroxychloroquine or remdesivir or whatever it is. That's probably our only hope at this point. I'm just gonna keep my phone down while I go past the security guy. They're very strict around here. So many of the security personnel in the Philippines, they have this little mini Gestapo attitude going on all the time. There's a lot I could say about this culture and some of its problems. I'll tell you that. So we've arrived to Robinson's Mall. And I, I just want to see if they're still using the quarantine pass card or if I can get in without it.
Okay, I'm just gonna keep my phone down as I come closer. Again, I don't want security hassling me. They see me recording, they might, who knows, cause problems. Whatever it is, they look for any excuse to, to give you shit. Okay, so, we're approaching the entrance. Okay, I don't even have to ask. They're still using the quarantine pass card to get in. So that's kind of disappointing. That's the main thing that I was hoping was going to be phased out today. Maybe it still will be, I don't know. But, you know, you really feel restricted when... when you can only go out and shop three days a week. So I guess, I guess that's the situation. So they, they moved from an enhanced quarantine to a general quarantine. But what I'm not seeing is many improvements on like basic liberties. It seems like, uh, you know, they, they, they have that on paper, but it doesn't, it doesn't look like they're very um, e eager to roll back these restrictions so it looks like we're still stuck using quarantine passes and all that uh, yeah. I'm assuming the curfew is still 6 p.m. at the beginning it was 10 p.m. I'm assuming that uh, alcohol is still banned all this stuff so what, what, what was supposed to be two weeks in devout Philippines became a permanent unintended holiday. And um, there you go, I mean, every month I keep thinking, well, you know, next month it'll get better. It, it, it never does. And uh, I have to bite the bullet one of these days and try to, you know, contact my embassy and be, you know, willing to have to probably cough up a couple thousand dollars to get back to the States. I really am trying to avoid that. I don't have a particular reason to be back in the States. You guys have, you know, if you guys have seen this channel, you know, the places I've been, you know, how I live in a mobile, independent way. So, I mean, I don't have a pressing reason to be back in the States. I'm frankly concerned that the United States is handling the situation even worse at least in the Philippines we're not having food shortages at least we're not running out of meat on the shelves I can still go to the store and buy stuff but uh, you know if this situation never resolves itself though then you know you have to just go back eventually well this is cyrus the explorer checking in from checking in from uh, the philippines lockdown prison and i'll see you guys next time